Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's very kind words. Uh, yeah, there's something about entrepreneurship, it's certainly not easy. And I think everybody who is in the solar industry in India also knows that the sector is not easy. Um, that said, over the, when you look back over the last 10 years and you hear those kind of statistics that we've just heard uh, from Mr. Jain, it is truly phenomenal what has been achieved. And it does indeed make me very proud to being based in Bangalore the last 12 years to now think that 63% of all of Karnataka's power is renewable is really a phenomenal achievement, actually. Um, now, we do things in Orb Energy that are a little different. We probably have always done things a little bit differently. I'll tell you a little bit about what we do. And then maybe as, an, as a sort of a, a way into discussing uh, policy issues, I'll just flag a few of the policy issues that we face. Uh, as a company, Orb Energy started as a distributed solar company, a rooftop solar company. We started very much with rural routes, uh, doing a lot of off-grid because in 2007, when we launched, it was a rural market for solar. Everybody remember the price of a solar panel in 2007? $4. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was about, a hundred, at that time, it was about uh, 160, 170 rupees a watt. And today, what's about 20 rupees a watt. So that's how far we've come over more than 10 years, which is, again, a remarkable achievement. Um, and that's more of a global achievement, but still, it's, it is phenomenal. As a company, what did that mean for us? Well, initially, we started doing off-grid systems, uh, you know, we, even as small as 40 watts, up to one kilowatt. I remember a one kilowatt system with batteries when we first began cost a customer five lakhs, five lakhs installed. So you can imagine not too many were doing uh, a one kilowatt system at that time at five lakhs. What we always saw though was the critical role of finance. And I don't think that's changed at all. For distributed solar, if you don't have finance, you don't have a market. It's that simple, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, in the beginning, we, all, we worked with banks and banks as partners. We worked with about four or five different nationalized banks and uh, they were lending for off-grid solar systems. We saw that by about 2012, so about five years after we started, the financing from those banks just dried up for off-grid. Now that was a combination of various factors, but one of the main ones was that the, the central government got involved with subsidizing off-grid and the banks were not pleased with having NABARD in between and the different subsidy mechanisms that existed. And they said, thank you very much, we're out. So finance, pretty much overnight dried up for off-grid solar. At the same time, around that time, solar panels were falling rapidly in price, rapidly. So probably by that point, uh, they were on about uh, one and a half dollar cents per watt. So probably at that time was about 90, about 90, 80, 80 rupees, somewhere around there, 80, 90 rupees. And we just saw a huge drop from about 2012, 2013, 2014. And at that time, then the rooftop solar market for commercial and industrial customers started to open out. As PV panel prices came down, suddenly the miracle happened, which is that we reached grid parity. I mean, I can't, I don't know if you remember, but when we were all in the industry way back when, grid parity seemed like a very far off dream. The day that solar would be cheaper than the grid seemed almost too far out to imagine if it would ever happen. And then by somewhere around 2014, we could go to a commercial industrial customer and say to them, hey, look, if you put solar panels on your rooftop, then you will uh, generate electricity at a cheaper rate than the grid. And that was a really big moment. And it was clear that that was going to be a very hot segment going forward. So we, um, as a company, we really started to pivot. We started to pivot from doing off-grid to on-grid. And, uh, and we would have loved to have done more on-grid residential as well, but we just saw the on-grid residential was so difficult. It's so challenging in terms of cost expectations of the customer and then and all your transaction costs for synchronization. And then of course, all your customer acquisition costs as well to find the customer. So unfortunately, uh, but fortunately in some ways and unfortunately in others, the CNI market really was the one to focus on. So residential for us has started to drop off. As a company now, probably 80% of what we do in 
in um, Karnataka, which is, Karnataka makes up about 60 or 70% of all our volume. But about 80% of that is, um, is uh, rooftop CNI. Now, when you look at rooftop CNI, we also could see very clearly that there was an, a lack of finance. So what did I do? I went to a few banks, and I went to, I went, I went to a whole bunch of banks. I went to Standard or Chartered, I went to ICICI. I went to meet some of the other banks that were focused on SMEs uh, around 2014, 2015. And I said to them, would you like to start financing rooftop solar? And they all said, sure, yes. But the problem was to get from sure yes to an actual product in the market was just impossible. It wasn't going to happen. They had too many other competing products and agendas. They had their own internal issues. It just wasn't possible to get the, the attention of the banks to get them to finance solar. And as we just said at the beginning, if you don't have finance for solar, you don't really have a distributed market for solar. So as a company, what could we do? Really, we had no choice. We had to start to do our own financing. And everybody who had ever looked at our business model said, you know, due to the challenges of contract enforcement in India, getting into your own financing is very challenging. So, you know, yeah, you can give finance, but we'd be able to collect the money. Now, at that time, of course, the OPEX providers started to emerge. So guys who were starting to do long-term PPAs. And I have to say, when I first saw that emerge, I also had my doubts. I thought, my goodness, that is challenging. But I think what you see that many OPEX providers have done, which I fully understand, is that they have limited their customers at triple B plus rated and above. So for them, they found the most creditworthy customers they could find, the ones who they thought would not default on a contract for 15 to 20 years, and they locked them in. Now, I still think we've heard enough horror stories from the OPEX market to know that customers still default. When they see prices coming down so fast and they've locked themselves in at whatever it is, six rupees per kilowatt hour, but suddenly the new price is four rupees a kilowatt hour, you can imagine that a lot of customers will go back for renegotiation. And that, can, that is very hard. As a company, we, we decided instead to sort of stay away from the OPEX model. Um, we, thought, we saw that, okay, the OPEX model is challenging for 15, 20 year contracts. And that we also saw that dealing with corporations was an, also another big challenge. How do you navigate a corporation? How do you get from your contact point to the end, to the end point of getting the deal? And so we saw that actually, and also we saw that a big part of the market was underserved, which was the SME segment. And because we had our roots in tier two towns and cities, tier three towns and cities, we saw that SMEs were a largely underserved part of the market where if we could bring finance to them, they would buy. So what we did instead in 2015 is we came up with our own, in -house, we call it in-house finance, but it's nothing more than credit. We extend three to four year credit on an EMI basis to an SME, and that gives them confidence or in many cases, that gives them the ability to buy. So, um, and I make that point, that difference between confidence and, and ability, because sometimes even an SME who has the money will still want to take the credit from us to keep us on the hook. And we understand that. They want to make sure that we deliver what we said we're going to deliver, so they keep us on the hook. Uh, we've now been running that facility for um, uh, about, yeah, about, in total now about four years. We have only one default out of more than 100 cases. And that has been, so we'd love to see it scale further. Um, and that's where we are now in the process of scaling. We don't take any collateral um, and we simply uh, rely on the, on the analysis that we do of the company's financials to enable us to lend to them. Um, now, sort of turning to policy, because I think part of this today's discussion is about policy. Uh, we've seen that as we've started, as we've grown, and we've done now about 80 megawatt of rooftop in, um, across different states of India. But if we're talking about Karnataka today, we probably have about 50 megawatts in Karnataka. Uh, it's, a, um, it's a market that is definitely so I would just slightly, if Mr. Jane was here, I would slightly disagree. I think the rooftop market is bubbling in Karnataka. I think there's a lot of demand. We see a lot of demand. This year has been challenging. I'm sure everybody in the room would agree this year has been a challenging year. And uh, especially 
when you talk to SMEs, they're hit quite hard when an economy goes down. The automotive SMEs that we are dealing with, forget it, they're not going to buy this year. You know, so, um, but there are still a lot of SMEs that can and will. And, you know, I was just in Mangalore the other night for the inauguration of the new CII chapter there. Lots of SMEs were present. Lots of SMEs want to do it. The payback now for an SME is three years. Okay, you, you basically, three years, you know, so you invest in PV, you get your money back in three years, your panels are warranted for 25 years, your inverter should last anywhere between five and 10 years. Even if you build in two replacement costs of the inverters over that time, they're still generating an, an incredible return on their investment, 30, 40%. So um, the point is that we see a good thriving rooftop market. Could it be better? Absolutely, it could be better. <laughs> some of the issues, so maybe just to talk about some of the issues we face on a policy, from the policy side. Um, and maybe just to step back a bit and just to um, look at what was always bound to happen. I think India is not alone in seeing that as the rooftop solar market or distributed solar market grows, so the, the existing incumbents, which in this case are the discoms, will push back. Right? They, the, for them, this is a disruptive technology. Solar, if you think about it, is the essence of a disruptive technology. It's taken electricity that was predominantly a centralized power source, you know, thermal power stations, hydropower stations, and now it's allowed anybody to put solar on their rooftop and to basically generate their own power. That is profoundly disruptive to their existing business models. So I can understand where they're coming from. I can understand why they push back. I can understand the resistance. Um, the issue is that even in Karnataka, where, as you've heard from Mr. Jain, is, is very pro-rooftop, the reality is that the discoms are, are pushing back. So we've recently had, and we're not an OPEX provider, so it doesn't affect us, but anybody else who does provide the, an OPEX product would have been very affected by the new regulations in Karnataka, which are basically made it almost uh, not viable to do OPEX in the country, in the, in the state. Um, the, the other areas though, that are smaller things that we see all that just, and it can seem, it sounds trivial and small, but it really affects the pace of synchronization, the ability of the guys on the, gr on the ground to synchronize, to do the meter reading is really painful. We maintain a big team of people that all they do is go hold the hand of the local BESCOM, HESCOM, MESCOM, Discom to take to f help them figure out how to do this new net metering. It's it's not really trickled down. That training has not really trickled down to the field staff, and so the the pace of synchronization is difficult. And that's difficult for us too, because you can imagine as a customer who has paid money, they've given us a down payment. We're executing installation, and they're saying, "Where's my power?" And we're saying, "Yeah, yeah it's delayed. I'm sorry, the synchronization is delayed." Um, they don't want to pay their EMI. They don't want to pay anything until they're seeing the power. So that pace of synchronization is a real issue. And I think that training um, all the way down the field force is a real issue. Um, the other one that we see that's really, it sounds trivial, but it's really difficult is the, the discoms now want to impanel components. So there are some component inverters in particular, which they want to impanel in Karnataka and probably elsewhere. And and those, that's, that pace of impaneling is so slow. So it just means that at some point you've done a deal to sell a system with a certain inverter. Well, sudden, suddenly you find that inverter, though it was impaneled last year, is not impaneled this year. And getting that impaneled takes a long time. So there, I think there are these, you know, there are these small things that in the end, though, just really disrupt and affect the market. Um, that said, Karnataka has net metering. They've not done anything like what Maharashtra is trying to do with a massive surcharge on net metering. And so that net metering policy has been uh, very positive, very forward looking. And uh, I'm very pleased that in the end, uh, we're in Karnataka and we have that to fall back on. I just hope that discoms here in Karnataka don't try to follow the Maharashtra model and start to put a charge on rooftop solar, which could happen. And I think then the really interesting question is how do we as an industry come together to also push back against that? I mean, that I think is really the big challenge. Myself, having been in Bangalore for 12 years, I still don't know personally how to navigate 
that, how to navigate uh, the industry associations, how to navigate then the policy uh, lobbying. It's a real challenge and I welcome anybody's input on it because I think as we move forward and so if Mr. Jane's vision comes to light that rooftop grows even more, well then the resistance from the discounts will grow even more. We can say that there shouldn't be resistance from the discounts because as you know, as you as quite rightly has been mentioned, electric vehicles are on are coming up. There's going to be a huge demand for electricity. These these discoms are going to need all the electricity they can get. But I think that's too far in the future. And that model probably is not believed by them yet. So unfortunately, we are the situation where solar is perceived to be a competing technology and uh, the discoms are pushing back. Okay, um, the, probably the, only, the other thing to mention on ground-mounted, um, we as a company also see that there is a ground-mounted market. We uh, talk to many SMEs, the larger SMEs, where you find maybe, you know, you, do, you cover their roof and they take 300, 400 kilowatts, but that might only be about 30 or 40 percent of their electricity needs. So, of course, you have to go off you have to go off-site and you have to do ground-mounted. We're going to start to do that. But what you see, of course, as you know, that in Karnataka, they basically stopped open access. The IPP model through a two and a half rupee uh, per, per unit surcharge is now basically dead. Um, but captive remains possible. The captive model where the, the customer will own their asset, that is possible. And that works. A so group captive, captive, that works. That's in place, and that's certainly an area where we as a company going forward are going to focus. I understood from today's event that this was to be a discussion, so I didn't, I was told not to come with a presentation. So really, I just, this was, these are my talking points for the, today. I'd like to, I'd be happy to open it up for discussion because I'd also like to hear the views of others in the room. So thank you very much, and I look forward to the dis discussion that follows. Thank you. Thank you.